What is up, everybody? It is Joe from JLW Games coming at you with another cool video. And today we're going to be showing you how to create a good and relatively realistic roller coaster in Planet Coaster. Now, fair warning, this is not going to be a tutorial on how to create the most realistic coaster. However, it is going to be a tutorial on how to get uh, a good coaster build a good coaster with greens across the board with green excitement green fear and green nausea with some tips and tricks so if you are just wanting to build some good coasters um, and you just want some better ratings for the rides and you want to have a little bit slight realism to them um, this is the video for you we're going to be creating a, this coaster right here in front of me it is going to be um, nice because we're going to be using some basic tricks and tips. We're not going to be doing anything ridiculous. We're not going to be focusing on any heart lining uh, or anything. That's going to be a different video for when I do my tutorial on most realistic coasters. So if you want to create a realistic ride, um, this one is just for those casual players out there that want to build a good coaster in their park. And you know, I am trying to keep it as realistic as I can as well as basic. So Anyways, let's get right into it, and I hope you guys learn something. Alright, so first things first, what we're going to do is, of course, click on coasters here. And uh, for this particular tutorial, I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the Malice Unchained, otherwise known as the RMC iBox track. It is a steel hybrid coaster, so it has wooden supports with a steel track. Um, so I think I'm gonna go with it because this ride you can do so much with and I think it'll be the easiest to get accomplished that so um, if you're very very beginning starting out and playing a coaster it's very simple uh, for the most part I'm gonna be going through everything I kind of do so uh, just uh, try to stay up as long as you can pause the video repeat uh, rewind do whatever you need to do so if you push the Z key or Z key uh, depending on where you're at um, it will rotate it a complete 90 degrees, so <coughs> that's awesome. Or if you hold the Z key, you can rotate it anywhere. Um, if you have an angle snap on, it will actually snap it uh, to spots. I usually keep it off for this. Or, uh, well, in this case, if you push the X key, another shortcut, it will actually bring up the advanced move tool. And this is a very handy feature because you can literally move it in any direction. If you push X again, you can actually rotate it in any direction. Depending on which shapes, you can have more uh, axes to rotate it on. So, um, a good place to get started with your coaster. Uh, so, usually when you plop it in, it's going to be completely close to the ground like that. A good thing to start off with most of your coasters is to raise the station up just a little bit. Um, not a whole lot, but just a bit. Um, it's really nice because you can add a little bit of a pre-drop right out of the station, and that way you don't have to go straight into the lift hill. And this is kind of one of my lessons that I like to, to choose on. So this will take us directly into the editor. <clears throat> but anyways, um, you could go straight into the lift hill, just like this if you wanted to. <coughs> but for today's tutorial, I think we're going to stick and actually do a little bit before our um, our lift hill. I always think it adds a little bit more excitement to the ride itself. If you're starting a little bit before the lift hill, have a little bit of a drop uh, before you get into your lift. So um, you can use, usually leave the angle snap on if you'd like to. And, um, you know, I usually use smaller pieces for something like this. You can do this, and you can see it... It is pretty up high, but I want a dr lower drop. So if I want to make it bigger, uh, you can make this part a little bit bigger, and you'll get that. But um, that's not as realistic. See, we're going to try and stay a little bit realistic as possible, but um, it might not always happen. So you can see that's pretty steep. Um, but you always want to make things a little bit steeper, especially when you push the smooth tool, because it's going to actually <clears throat> not make it as steep when you put it in. So... Since we don't have a lot of speed, we don't have to bank any turns just yet. So I'm going to make a 90 degree turn, and you can always untick angle snap on and off. Sometimes I keep it on depending if I want to have that snap. And then just kind of based on your preference on how big you want this turn to be, <clears throat> I don't recommend real small out of this. 
try and get a good decent size um, for sure shaping your your coaster track and uh, that way the G's are nice and beautiful as well so I'll do that twice and then we're going to enter the lift hill. As for your lift hill, if you want to keep it somewhat realistic, I would recommend to go about 30, degree, 30 degrees to 45 degrees. No more than 45, because um, <coughs> that's usually the steepest that these kind of coasters go to, um, especially this kind of coaster. So this tutorial, you basically want to probably keep it exclusive to this coaster as well. Um, I might do other tutorials on other different types of coasters because they're all different in each ways. For this tutorial, we're going to have a 30 degree lift hill. Um, and I always have, we always have the angle snap on when I do uh, my lift hills unless I want a specific number. And to make our lift hill just a little bit longer and a little bit faster, we can click a couple times. And you want to keep your lift hill nice and straight and beautiful until you get to about where you want to be. So we're going to go a little bit over 100 feet here. Um, these coasters are capable of going around 200-ish feet uh, in real life. So if you do want to keep it realistic, that is all right. If you want to, if you're not real big on realism, you can keep it. You can do whatever heights you want. But um, again, we're kind of trying to keep things a little bit as realistic as possible. Um, but initially, what we're going for is better ratings <coughs> at the same time. So let's go a little bit higher. And we're going to get to around the 120 feet range. So we're at 122 feet. So once you get it level at zero degrees here, so I just drag it down to zero degrees. And then we're going to go back to standard track here. So make sure you don't stick on to the lift hill. Um, we can also generally uh, speed these lift hills up. If you click on one section, it will actually change the entire lift hill that's connected. So just go to utility settings here. And let's raise this up to about seven instead of five. All right, let's go click right here to add our pieces back on. <coughs> Excuse me. And then it's always nice to get a nice, good shaping for your first drop. So I like to shape it quite nicely. This is usually where I turn the angle snap off. I don't usually like using angle snap here. And then get a nice little descent here. This one, this particular track can go up to 85 degrees, so it can go nearly vertical, which is really awesome. We'll go back here, and you always want to go a little bit steeper than what you want, so I'm going to go all the way to 85. And then once you start <clears throat> getting back to the midway point, you want to start leveling it out. And because of G-forces, we don't want the for uh, fear to go too high. You're going to want to start leveling out nice, big, and smooth here. Um, I usually do just one piece, or the same size piece, all the way through until I'm done. Just about right there, and you can make it go all the way down to the ground if you'd like to. And then afterwards, let's go ahead and select this by dragging our arrow all the way down and clicking Smooth All quite a few times. Just spam the heck out of it. You always want to smooth it out as best as you can. That way your POVs look pretty decent as well. <coughs> so this big secret uh, to having the best coaster is airtime. Now airtime is when um, you get thrown out of your seat. So you go over a hill and you can feel yourself levitating out of the seat. That's what you want to uh, really like get the feeling of. So ejector airtime is always nice when you have a big hill and you're coming off a big hill going into a small drop or into a small hill so say I go off this big drop we can go up like just a little bit here into an ejector airtime hill so it's literally just a small tiny hill just like this all right get that to zero percent then we'll just go over it and smooth it <clears throat> and it will always make it a little bit smaller as well, or shorter, so keep that in mind. So this is kind of very, like, a mini version of Steel Vengeance, kind of, so um, you don't have to start off with a little bump, but I'm going to, for this sake, it's going to give you that a little bit of ejector airtime, um, and also you can always start your test while you're building as well, so you can watch your um, coaster go around and you can kind of watch your excitement fear and nausea ratings it's always good to do that early you don't want to do that later otherwise you might have to go back and change some stuff because uh, we're trying our goal is to get green on every single rating so as you can see raising the uh, 
lift hill speed also will raise that excitement up just a little bit because it's going a little bit faster as well. So you can see the excitement does raise the higher the ride gets, so does the fear. Your lift hill is going to be your least um, exciting part. So after it starts to go over, pop over that drop, you're going to see the excitement get really high. And just watch these. Let's see how much excitement it gets over this hill. Look at all that green. And that's what you want to create is all this green. <clears throat> so you want to try and have a lot of airtime hills. Very nice to have those airtime hills. Next, I think we're going to go ahead and put in an overbank turn. These are also big excitements, um, pleasers as well. Um, and turns are always the hardest thing to do in Planet Coaster. So you got to be very careful with these. So I'm going to start out going up here. And this is a very simple way. Um, if you want to do in a more advanced way, I'll have a different video for that. But in the advanced video, I would turn on banking offset to create more of a heart line. But for this purpose, we're just going to try and create a smooth planet coaster turn. So we're not going to worry about that. <coughs> Excuse me. And now you're going to want to bank your track. Um, probably we're going to do a 90, try and do a 90 degree turn here. So this first piece, let's go ahead and go 45 degrees. We're going to rotate this. Um, let's go 45 degrees and this at 45 because that looks like it will fit quite nicely. So the next piece, we're completely 90 degrees at this point. So this is the part where I want to start going, leveling it out a little bit. And we might want to make this just a little bit bigger too. So I'm going to use slightly bigger pieces to go up a little bit higher. So we're going to go back to 45, 45, just kind of based on whatever your, uh, how big your ride is here. So let's go there. And then we're going to go back down to zero here, flip this to 90. So now we're at a 90 degree turn. You can see how well that's going to be shaping. It's going to shape a lot better once we use the smooth tool. So just keep that in mind. <clears throat> but if you want to exactly 90, sometimes you might turn off the angle snap just a little bit. Because after you smooth it, it is going to get rid of some of that degrees. So you might want to do that. Uh, or to keep it simple, just keep it at 90. And it will do it a little bit. But So now coming down... We're going to want to flip this back to 45, back where we had it. Flip this down to 45 as well. We want to mirror the other side perfectly. So you got to be careful with that. And then this will go back down to zero since we're now down here. And now we're going to start leveling it out. And we'll want this back at zero. And there you have it. We have a nice overbank turn now to finish this overbank turn you're going to want to take your arrows here drag it over the entire thing and spam the heck out of that smooth tool it will smooth your turns out very very beautifully now you don't want to do it too much as you can see we lost a lot of height and it actually took away a lot of our uh, banking so you can actually use Control z if you do go a little bit too far <coughs> see i went a little bit too far there and you can do it just a couple times. And if you want to rebank it back up, look how smooth that goes. You can do that by unclicking the angle snap here, get the rotate tool or the, the banking tool, and just kind of bank it back to where you want it. If you want to be closer to 90 degrees. Once you see that bar, first bar there, that's the indication you're at about 90 degrees. So now we can keep it at 90 degrees. And if, if you push smooth again, it is going to uh, get rid of that banking a little bit as well so you can just play around with that until you got something you like and it will look brilliant so let's go ahead and take a ride on it right here already on <coughs> the lift hill now we're going to try and make everything as smooth as possible but again this is definitely going to be more for if you, you're just wanting you're just wanting to get those greens that's what this video purpose is but again i want to try and keep it as realistic and simple as possible and you can see that's fairly smooth. It's pretty good. Not too shabby. <clears throat> so it's a really nice bank turn. All right, and then after each element, it's never a bad idea to just pop in another little airtime moment here or something. Just kind of like so. Just pop in another hill. <clears throat> All right, and of course go back through it, smooth it out a little bit. 
<clears throat> and then you can always throw in, oh, I guess I had that still turning there. You gotta be sure at 0%. Sometimes that's always uh, a little bit of a thing that can happen. So make sure you're not turning sometimes. You gotta make sure this is at 0%. Sometimes it can sneak up on you and change. <clears throat> All right, smooth it out a little bit. And you can see that after it goes over that airtime hill, that goes all the way back up in the green. <clears throat> now, when you are you start losing speed on your <clears throat> coaster, it's very important to actually go in and um, you want to make sure you, you start getting your coaster lower to the ground. You're going to have smaller elements and everything like that. So um, just kind of be careful with that. Also, another thing you can do is make outer bank turns. I'm not going to do that in this one particularly just yet. Um, it's probably one of the first elements you would put in, but um, we're going to keep it like that. So also never be ashamed to use the end game, um, the end game pieces here. Now you're most likely for this type of coaster if you want to do inversions, because these ca coasters are capable of doing inversions in real life. Um, you want to stick to mostly probably these zero, zero G rolls. Um, they aren't the most realistic thing in the world, but if you want to go for some smoothness, uh, keeping your your ride smooth, these are definitely not a bad way to go. But I'm going to do a really neat um, inversion here that's not available in there. So if you want to check it out, here we go. So I'm going to keep the angle snap on just for this for this purpose here. We're going to go up into the steep incline. What we're going to be creating is a zero G stall. These are really cool because it holds the uh, <coughs> the trains upside down for an extended period of time, and you get some really cool effects. So I just rotated this 90 degrees, and then we're going to rotate it another 90 degrees to get it to about 180. You can see about how much speed. We might want to make this a little bit taller, which we are going to do here. Let's make this just... A little bit longer of track piece, track segments. So it's a little bit longer and smoother. All right, after you get this piece in, we're going to shrink it down to a little bit of a smaller. And this is, you know, you kind of want to get, you know, exactly around, let's see, you kind of want to figure out um, how long of a stall you want to do. You don't want to do too long if you're kind of, again, going a little bit for, for the realism. Um, but... You can do that, and then we can draw it back out. And you can either go twist the other way. Uh, most stalls actually twist back the same way most of the time. And we can just do this. The smoothing tool will make this better, hopefully. You can see it's going to hang it upside down for a little bit, which will be cool. Now you're going to have to do a little bit and custom inversions are always a little bit of a difficult and more advanced thing to do. So you just gotta you just gotta practice with them. Sometimes they can be really hard to get smooth, um, for sure. So just kind of be on the lookout for that. See, on our exit could be a little bit can be a little bit different. That's all right. And then this is the smoothing this out is definitely difficult. You don't want to just take the whole thing and smooth it out because if you do that, it's gonna mess everything up most most of the time you can see that's just kind of weird looking and it's going to embank bank everything we don't really want that so we're going to start at the bottom here smooth it on this side smooth this side go back to the other side here smooth it smooth it and just do that a couple times <clears throat> smooth this uh, each side up a couple times just hit it once don't hit it twice or more just hit it once each time and we're smoothing out the transition into the stall. That's what we're, our goal is right here. We're going to be trans, uh, smoothing out that transition. And now, if you're here for realism um, kind of coasters, we're not going to be worrying about heartline rolls here or heartlining uh, at all. That's, that's for a different video. This is literally just to get the best coaster that you can possibly get out of Planet Coaster. Um, anyways. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece right here and get these other pieces. If you click smooth there, you got to be careful with this. Smooth it. Press the smooth tool just a couple times. You can see how that works. 
pretty nicely. And you only you just want to be kind of careful because you don't want it to because it's going to start unbanking it a little bit. And we don't want it to unbank. And this is going to round it out quite a bit. So it's I never I actually made this a little bit short. So you probably want to make it a little bit taller so you have a better stall. So you always want to make things just a little bit uh, more than what you're expecting because the smooth tool will make it shorter and unbank it as well. So you just got to be careful there. Smooth it a little bit there and then go back to the other sides <coughs> and just kind of touch those up just a little bit. And these are actually real inversions on these ki kinds of coasters too. They're actually really cool. So if you've never seen these inversions, I really definitely check out Rocky Mountain Coasters, uh, some of their rides, and they have some really cool uh, different inversions. So now we can select, try selecting all of this. So two pieces at once. So we can get these transitions as smooth as possible. I saw them, they were a little bit jittery. We wanna try and get rid of that jitteriness on these. So if you make a mistake and you're like, oh gosh, that just messed everything up, don't worry, you're gonna always undo. Press the undo button. Now we're gonna head on to the ride and see how this stall turned out. It could turn out a little bit jittery and ugly, but if you're not going for smoothness or realism, it might not be a huge deal because <clears throat> custom inversions are almost impossible to make and plan a coaster to make them smooth. You can make them smooth, but you have to use a very advanced method that is for a different video. This is to make simple stuff, so. But it actually smoothed it out pretty decently. It's not terrible. Uh, it could use a little bit of work, so if you want to go back and work on it a little bit more, you could, and you can see... Uh, that it actually turned out decently well. I'm actually pleasantly surprised with that. Um, now you also got to kind of be careful here because we're getting a little close to the station and we want to make sure there's places for our entrance and exit um, for our rides because, you know, you don't want to trap your guests in and out. I mean, unless you really want to, you could. But uh, like I said, let's create some nice little airtime hills and we're going to start losing a little bit of speed here on the ride. So... Let's go ahead and smooth that out. And uh, we're gonna just have a nice 40, let's do a 45 degree turn. And we're gonna do 45, 45 here. I'm actually gonna turn off, let's see. So if you place one down and then go back one and turn off the angle snap, it will keep it in the exact spot that it was in. Cause I actually do wanna do a little bit of a decline here. So we're gonna go down a little bit. So it's gonna catch up a little bit of speed here on this turn, and that's what we want. So we're gonna go down a little bit. And you can see, I'm gonna to have to re-angle this just a little bit, make it a little bit wider. So instead, I might actually go, instead of doing <coughs> 45 degrees, I might actually do 15 degree turns and see how that goes. Actually start out, we could start out 30, so we can have a nice smooth transition here. It's actually a little bit too, let's see. Let's do 30 degrees, because that will get us to 90 still. And widen it out. I'm just trying to get to the outside of here. There we go. That's a good place to be. All right, so that's... So you can also go back and like test it out a little bit a couple times. All right, turn angle snap off. Gonna make you go down just a little bit in the slightest because I still want you to pick up some, keep the speed going. So we're gonna have a nice little high speed turn here. Very wide high speed turn. It's very important to smooth out these curves though because these will be very rough. Um, if you want, at least again, if you're going for smooth POVs, if you don't care about that, then you know it's not a big deal then. But, <clears throat> Now we're back here, so I'm going to go over here, spam the smooth tool out of that. If you kept it the same, the the rotation the same through the entire turn, you don't have to really smooth that out if you don't want to. I mean, you could go in and smooth out the entire turn, and it'll make it just a little bit smoother, but uh, I don't recommend doing too much to it. 
You can see it'll go up. We're trying to stay in the greens. We are losing some speed, but we're staying in the green. That is important. When you watch it go through, make sure it stays in the green. All right, we're going to try and pop ourselves up for another airtime moment here. And you're always free to do more inversions and stuff like that. I might do one more roll, like a like a zero-G roll or something, uh, to get it to where I need to be. So go ahead and smooth out another little airtime hill. We want to try and get those airtime moments. <clears throat> now, this coaster isn't going to be very huge because it, I don't have it very tall. And you can also, another trick, if you're just below that green, there's a little trick you can do to actually get it up into the green. And that's actually to use um, to lower the multiplier on the friction. So you can, this is a very like simple layout. It's not gonna be <clears throat> insane, but there we go. You can see it gets in the yellow there a little bit, but as long as most of the ride is set in the green, that's what we're going for. <clears throat> so about this point where I'm losing speed, I wanna try and get it to connect back into the station. So once I get there, I always click at the end of the station and we wanna be able to run multiple trains on this. So we're gonna go ahead and click a block section. And then I always like to put a optional catwalk on my block sections, <clears throat> like so. And then I'm gonna switch over to friction brakes. So we're working from behind here. So now we're on friction brakes. These are the, the brakes that are actually gonna slow the ride down. Uh, before right before you go into the station I always do put a little bit of an angle on these um, just a little bit like that for when we end the ride we'll put one more there all right so now we're gonna use an auto connect tool once we get over there and it will connect it perfectly in place <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna try and attempt to do a small uh, little roll so we got a little speed there. If we can put in a nice little roll, um, I don't know if there's actually like a, <clears throat> you got like heartline rolls and stuff like that uh, within the game. But um, if you want to use the, again, you can use in-game stuff if you so desire. Um, but uh, for this instance, we're going to be using our own custom stuff. Um, so you could use these heartline rolls, which could be smooth these are actually nice because they actually do have the heart line in them um as you can see uh it means it goes in that little circular motion <clears throat> so you can use the end game ones or you can create your own custom ones which again will not be as smooth um so you can kind of let's go ahead and i'm going to create a couple pieces of flat track here let's go ahead and hop on and see what it looks like and we can also see the excitement rating at the same time next door or right next to us here, so we can see if the element is going to be throwing enough. We might even put a little, see we can do a little roll. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm actually gonna stick with the in-game one because this I just wanted to do a roll and this is actually very smooth. So <clears throat> even to this day, even if you're advanced, even though I'm kind of, you know, on the advanced side of building, I still sometimes use the in-game stuff because, you know, why not? You know, it works well if you can place it in there perfectly pretty well you have there's no shame of using them there really isn't okay so i'm going to do another i'm going to do an airtime pop here and we're going to go into our final turn which will lead us into the break run <clears throat> so again they even have like their own little wave turn or big turns here that you could use like i don't recommend these um if you're going for a little bit more of a realistic design but um again we're going this is a very uh shorter kind of ride it's not a big ride sorry if there's a little bit of background noise a big truck just went by through the uh through my uh it's still going by <laughs> going through my uh my neighborhood so <laughs> whoosh see and we're still in the green which is fantastic that's what we want to be in all right so we're going to go about 45 degrees this is going to be a smaller turn let's go up 30 degrees let's make it a 90 degree turn and we're going to have this this will create a nice little head chopper element as well going on the first drop which could create some more excitement go back to 45 again you just got to mirror 
what you did on the other side. This is at 30 degrees. And then, and the purpose of this, um, you could go back 90 degrees or we can actually undo the angle snap and just kind of try and angle it back towards where we want to end up at the end here. So I kind of want to do a little bit wider here because I want to end up right there at that break run. <clears throat> Since we've lost some speed, we can make some tighter turns and everything like that. So once you start getting to the tail end of it, you can make those tighter turns and everything. And since we're losing some speed, we want to try and keep the excitement up. As you can see, it's harder to keep it in the green, but we want to be in the green most of the ride. And then you'll notice once we get close to here, you can actually just auto connect it to the back piece. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to do. And then I always recommend taking that last section and just smoothing the heck out of it. All right, and then we're going to go to this, smooth the heck out of this turn. It's going to lower it a little bit, but I'm going to go ahead with it still selected. I want my banking on it, so I'm going to re-bank it back, bank it back up to where I had it. Let's smooth this turn out just a little bit, this piece, and then there is another tail end of this turn I wanted to actually smooth out, so right about right there. So it's nice and smooth. All right. So that is our layout for now. This is a uh, very basic design, nothing too fancy going on here. So you can see it goes through that heart line, goes over the bank, and it's still green across the board. That's what we want, and it slows it down. If it doesn't slow down your coaster enough and you don't have a lot of space to work with, click on your brake run, and you can actually change the deacceleration de rate, turn that up, and then your target speed, where you want it to kind of slow it down to. So if you want it to come to a stop faster or slow it down faster, turn up the deacceleration rate a little bit, and that will actually help you out a little bit as well. <clears throat> now, if you do want to keep it a little realistic, sometimes before your lift hill, put on that catwalk right there. That way, if they, you know, it's for evacuation purposes, if guests have to be evacuated from the lift hill. <coughs> All right, perfect. Now you think you got your park or your ride ready. The big moment of truth is, after doing the test, will you get greens across the board? That's always the big test. You know, this is a nice little small RMC style kind of coaster. There's not, it's not too big, not long, not fast, probably not super fast, but it's got a lot of airtime packed in, some good elements. See, we put in a uh, in game element and then we also made a custom element you know you don't have to make custom elements but um, from if you want to learn to make custom elements it's always a good idea to kind of try and put them in there all right so we can kind of take a look at the live testing here we want to keep an eye on that and make sure it stays green through most of the ride so far so good as you can see it's okay if it goes down into the yellow a few times but as long as it's in those high greens for most of the ride. You'll have those hints of yellows sometimes though. <clears throat> when it starts to slow down some speed. Look at that. Staying green most of the time through that turn. That's awesome. And then of course the final break run. You're going to lose all the excitement and stuff at the end as well. <clears throat> now here we go. The moment of truth. Let's see what it does. So our fear seems to have not been very high enough. So as you can see, the excitement rating is there. This is actually very surprising to me. I thought it was going to be green, but the fear actually is a little bit low. So if you want to try and do maybe a quick fix, head over here to the friction multiplier and crank it down to, you know, maybe 0.5 or something. And let's retest it. And this is actually what this is going to do is it's going to create more speed throughout the ride. So it's not going to slow down as much as it goes through the layout. So it's going to go twice as fast here, actually, through the layout, which could raise the fear up about to where we're actually where we want it. So you can even fast forward a little bit and uh, to the lift here, and you can see how it's actually going to go a little bit faster through the layout, and it might actually help us keep it uh, in the greens a little bit better. And it might actually raise the excitement rating more, too. Nice. 
as you can see it's not even hinting down into the yellow anymore so this is always a nice little tool i like to use the friction multiplier if you have it up and the fear actually gets up in the red towards the end and you might actually have to do a little more deacceleration here but that little red might actually spark it up a little bit uh just enough to average it out there it is and actually raise the excitement rating a little bit as well <coughs> usually when the fear goes up it's usually because you have some g-force issues so like in real life it actually wouldn't be safe uh so um but if you're not going for that you can actually go into heat maps here and actually look at these different g-forces uh, and see which points of the ride uh, where that need that needs work a little bit so let's go ahead and take a ride on the ride take a ride on the ride and uh kind of see how smooth it turned out as well so this is also really fast pace we can also turn it down uh you can also adjust that um uh the uh gosh dang it i lost my train of thought you can adjust the uh friction multiplier to wherever you need it so if you don't want to add as fast as we got it here you can also change it uh if you need it there as well as you can see how smooth that is and it was a little jittery on that last turn <coughs> but not too shabby and then if you want to run two train operation just go over here block section change the operation mode to block section number of trains two and you always have to have that block section there otherwise it's not going to work so there you have it now, um, if you want to avoid your coaster from stopping at the top of the lift, because it will actually, this one will actually advance as soon as this clears the lift hill, because the lift hill does count as a block section. Uh, if you don't want it to do that, go down here to the mini miniature departure interval and actually change it, you know, uh, to whatever you need to. You might have to do a couple tests. Let's go ahead and change it to 25 seconds. Sometimes it will take a couple cycles before it to actually take that uh, number into account. So what that means is it's not going to dispatch the ride until it is sat there for at least that many, that long. So um, actually, let's bump it up to about 30 seconds. So it does count when the other ride's on the lift. Um, this ride might be short enough to where it doesn't actually really matter. Uh, so as long as this clears the brake run before it hits the top, which it's going to be close, it is pretty fast. But that is totally up to you if you want to do that. But if it stops at the top of the lift, that is actually going to affect your rating. So you don't want it to stop at the top um, as much as possible. You want to try and avoid that. So <coughs> as you can see, it did stop for like half a second, but that's not a huge deal. I'm going to try and change this maybe to 0.6 and the departure interval to 35. If you want to get it going right away, you can actually hit stop and then test and then you can fast forward seeing how it works and yeah so the easiest coasters to actually use to get the uh greens across the board will be your hyper and giga coasters because those are all about airtime if you have more airtime the the <clears throat> the more exciting your coaster is actually going to be so over here our, we have a duration of 67.7 seconds, so it's just over a minute ride. Um, typically, most rides are best when it's at least uh, about a minute and a half to two minutes. That's usually about the length you want, but for this purpose, we just created a little bit of a smaller coaster, and you know, if it's not that long, it's not a big deal. <coughs> not at all, but anyways... That is our coaster design for today. Um, I hope you learned something uh, a little bit new uh, going into this tutorial. So I'm going to have more tutorials later on. Uh, other tutorials that I'm going to be looking into is creating a nice generic coaster station for your coasters, um, how to build those, and also how to create realistic coasters, um, which is going to be a more advanced kind of tutorial this was a basic tutorial on just how to create a good coaster in general to get that green across the board um 
Now, me being myself, I don't always get that green. You know, it doesn't always happen, you know, and don't get discouraged if it doesn't. But that's what you're always looking for and what you're always going for. And also something that can also raise the excitement rating is actually your track scenery rating. You can even place some scenery around it. So this is all fine and dandy, dandy, but if you want to have a nice looking coaster, just throw some trees around your uh, ride as well. I always like to turn the line to surface off. And just, I like putting these oak trees around it. Um, just create a little bit of environment. That might be another tutorial, creating an environment for a roller coaster as well. Uh, so just place them around and uh, you can actually create a really cool setting for your coaster uh, as well. So that'll be a different video from a long line. So we're just gonna place a couple here which looks really, really good. I like. Uh, I always like adding a couple of trees and foliage around in my ride, uh, but that's gonna be a different video for another time, how to create a great environment for your coaster. You can make any bad looking coaster into a nice looking coaster. So, um, and then of course, you can also change your colors and, um, and here if you want a different track color, say I want this to be a blue coaster, you can easily do that, of course, whatever you want to do. Uh, but red is my favorite color, so I'm I'm okay with keeping it red. So, fact of the line is the the bottom of the line is um, airtime. Have some nice bank turns, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, just have fun with it. You know, keep practicing, and you can create some really good coasters of your own. But I hope you learned something again, and make sure you guys have a great day and an even cooler tomorrow. Thanks for joining me, guys, and goodbye.